Theodorus Kolokotronis was a Greek general and the preeminent leader of the Greek War of Independence against the Ottoman Empire. Kolokotronis's greatest success was the defeat of the Ottoman army under Mahmud Dramali Pasha at the Battle of Davinica in 1822. In 1825, he was appointed commander-in-chief of the Greek forces in the Peloponnese. Today, Kolokotronis ranks among the most revered of the protagonists of Greece's War of Independence. Early Life Theodorus Kolokotronis was born at Ramavuni in Messenia, from a family of clefts, and grew up in Arcadia in the central Peloponnese where his family originated. The Kolokotronioi were a powerful and respected clan in Arcadia in the 18th century. Their legendary pride and insubordination is commemorated in a well-known folk song of that time. On a horse they go to church, on a horse they kiss the icons, on a horse they receive communion from the priest's hand. His father, Constantinos Kolokotronis, took part in an armed rebellion, the Orlov Revolt, instigated by the administration of Catherine the Great of Russia. He was killed in 1780 in an engagement with Turkish troops, along with two of his brothers, George and Apostolis. Prior to the Greek Revolution, Theodorus Kolokotronis operated as a cleft, an armatolis, and as a carpos. As the carpos, Kolokotronis worked for the Deli and As family. He acquired wealth by stealing sheep and marrying the daughter of a wealthy Peloponnesian notable. In 1805-1806, Ottoman attacks against the clefts forced Kolokotronis to flee to the island of Zakynthos. When Zakynthos was occupied by the British, he obtained useful military experience while serving under the command of Richard Church, a Philhellene, in the 1st Regiment Greek Light Infantry. In 1810, Kolokotronis was promoted to the rank of Major. From his service in the British Army, he adopted his characteristic red helmet. While in the Heptanese, he came in contact with the revolutionary ideas of the era and was influenced by them. War of Independence Outbreak Kolokotronis returned to the mainland just prior to the outbreak of the war and formed a confederation of irregular Moro cleft bands. These he tried to train and organize into something resembling a modern army. In May, he was named Archistrategos or Commander-in-Chief. He was already 50 years old by this time, a fact which contributed to his sobriquet Ageros II Moria or the Elder of Moria, whereby Moria was another name describing the Peloponnese. Kolokotronis's first action was the defense of Altetsi, the village near Tripoli where his army was mustering. Later, he was also the commander of the Greek forces during the siege of Tripolitsa. After the fall of Tripolitsa, which resulted in the massacre of its Muslim and Jewish population, he entered the town and they showed him a plane tree in the marketplace where the Turks were hanging the Greeks and he ordered it to be cut down. Napleon he next commanded Greek troops in the siege of the coastal town of Napleon. He took the port, and the Ottoman garrison in the town's twin citadels was running low on supplies. But the disorganized Greek provisional government at Argos, just to the north, could not complete negotiations for its surrender before a large Ottoman force began marching southward to crush the revolutionaries. Panicked, government officials abandoned Argos and began evacuations by sea at Napleon. Only an understrength battalion under Demetrius Ypsilantis remained to hold Larissa Castle, the fortress of Argos. As liberator Kolokotronis gathered the clefts together to march to the relief of Ypsilantis. This was quite a feat in itself, considering the near collapse of the government and the notoriously quarrelsome nature of the cleftic bands. Even the troublesome Soliotes lent a hand. The Ottoman army from the north commanded by Mahmud Dramali Pasha, after taking Corinth, had marched to the plain of Argos. The castle of Larissa was an excellent position, commanding the whole plain. To leave such a stronghold straddling Ottoman supply lines was far too dangerous. Dramali would have to reduce the fortress before moving on, scaling the cliffs, breaching the castle's stout walls and overcoming its resolute defenders would be no easy task. 
Yet, there was one weakness Dramali was unaware of. Larissa, unlike the famous Acropolis in Athens, had no spring and consequently fresh water had to be supplied from cisterns. Unfortunately for the Greeks, it was July and no rains were falling to fill the cisterns. Ypsilantis bluffed the Ottomans as long as he could, but towards the end of the month had to sneak his men out in the middle of the night. Dramali's men plundered the castle the next day, and he was now free to march them toward the coast to resupply. Ypsilantis's defense had bought Kolokotronis and the clefts valuable time. To his dismay, Dramali found himself cut off from his supply fleet, which had intended to land at Naplio but was successfully blockaded by the Greek fleet under Admiral Andreas Mulish. Dramali reluctantly decided upon a retreat toward Corinth through the Dervanaki Pass, through which he had just come unmolested. This was exactly what Kolokotronis had been hoping for. In August 1822, his quicker-moving guerrilla forces trapped the Ottomans in the pass and annihilated them in the Battle of Davinakir. A devastated Sultan Mahmud II in Constantinople was forced to turn to Muhammad Ali, ruler of the nominally Ottoman Pashaluk of Egypt, for help. The Greeks resumed the siege against the fortresses at Naplio, which fell in December. Kolokotronis is said to have ridden his horse up the steep slopes of Palamedi to celebrate his victory there, a statue in the town square, commemorates the event. He is attired in the pseudo-classical uniform of the Greek light infantry, which he was fond of wearing. Parliamentary crisis from December 1823 to February 1825. He took part in the civil wars among the various Greek factions, when his party was finally defeated. He was jailed in Hydra with some of his followers in March 1825, and was released only when an Egyptian army under the command of Ibrahim Pasha invaded the Moria. His eldest son, Panos Kolokotronis, was killed during the Second Civil War. Ibrahim's campaign Ibrahim was fresh from fighting the Warabi rebels in Arabia and so was used to fighting guerrillas. His troops were armed with the most modern equipment and trained by European experts. The Sultan had promised his father the island of Crete as an appanage for young Ibrahim if he could crush the rebels. With his eye on the prize, he burned his way through the Peloponnese, gaining much territory but arousing much hostility in Western European public opinion, which in the long run proved disastrous for the Ottomans. The island of Sphacteria and Navarino had already fallen into Ibrahim's hands, and to make matters worse for Kolokotronis, he still had to be on guard against the machinations of Petros Mavromichalus even as he was bracing himself against the new threat. Kolokotronis used guerrilla tactics to wear Ibrahim's forces down, but given his limited resources, was unable to prevent the widespread destruction that Ibrahim left in his wake. Still, in 1825, in recognition of his military acumen and many services to the Greek cause, he was appointed commander-in-chief of Greek forces in the Peloponnese, post-bellum activities. After the war, Kolokotronis became a supporter of Count Ioannis Cappadistrias and a proponent of alliance with Russia. When the Count was assassinated on 8 October 1831, Kolokotronis created his own administration in support of Prince Otto of Bavaria as a king of Greece. However, later he opposed the Bavarian-dominated regency during his rule. On 7 June 1834, he was charged with treason and sentenced to death though he was ultimately pardoned in 1835. Theodorus Kolokotronis died in 1843 in Athens one day after his son Constantinos's wedding. Epilogue In the twilight of his life, Kolokotronis had learned to write in order to complete his memoirs, which had been a perennial favorite in Greece, and had been translated several times in English and other languages. Kolokotronis's famed helmet, along with the rest of his arms and armor, may today be seen in the National Historical Museum of Greece in Athens. In addition to the Naplio statue mentioned earlier, there is another to be seen in Athens, in the forecourt of the old parliament building on Stadio Street, near Syntagma Square. Legacy 
Kolokotronizes also the name of military barracks near Tripoli. Caparo Micron Locotronis was so famous in popular culture that one can find references about him in strange places, like a gravure sculpted by knife on a stony sterner inside a cave in one of the holes in Mount Natali opposite the village like Hare in the valley of the Inarchos River. A portrait of Kolokotronis was depicted on the Greek 5000 Drachmas Bank Note of 1984-2002. Gallery Lithography of Kolokotronis by Karl Krasizen used for the 5000 drachma banknote. Kolokotronis's weapons and equipment. Old Parliament House. Kolokotronis's helmet. Statue of Kolokotronis at Avinakir. Statue in Naplian.